today. Let me see. Let me go look around and see if everything's posted where it should be. Yeah, looks like Facebook, YouTube is going and let me check the groups. Let's see, because last time the, I don't know why the video didn't end up in the groups. So, oh, there I am. Okay. Awesome. Good morning. Hmm. So I have a couple of new things coming along. Um, if you if you've been living anywhere besides under a rock, you probably know that everyone in the crochet world is or was making pocket shawls. I don't know if they're still making them actually because I'm still just like working on my pocket shawl pattern. <laughs> so, um, and I, we have, I have a follower. She goes by old boiler robo in the groups. It's not her real name, but, um, she's come up with one version and I really wanted to do a version that utilizes a, a technique that I actually start, did, started doing um, a year or so ago, which is to start the 60 kid blanket with a straight chain and then build the chevrons up. So this is for, <laughs> this is for um, those of you that, um, want to fill in the the um the, the the hills and valleys of on the top and bottom of the blanket and so this way hi cat um this way you can start your project flat and you don't have to go back after the fact and fill in afterwards and I know that you all are you you all are asking me for 60 kid blanket stuff different types of stuff all the time make a six day kid blanket bra <laughs> no one's actually ever asked for that but <laughs> um somebody did wear a swatch for a bra on a um on on a live one time um and that was really funny um yeah but i think that this will you guys are going to find lots of fun stuff to do with this straight start. And I have a pocket shawl pattern, a pocket shawl. My, my version goes sideways. So you start it on the long side and then, um, Robo's version goes the short way. So I hope you like them both. And, um, and, uh, and and make tons of them so we're working hard on that I thought because I never really did um, tutorials for the star blankets I just thought I would come on and just do some live tutorial for the star blankets because those are the blankets Everyone gets really hung up on that join, that single crochet join, and I never really made a good video for it, so I thought I would just come on and, and work on the star um, blankets and just do them live, because I like talking to you guys when I do it. And to be perfectly honest, since my surgeries, I cannot sit in this chair for very long, and I can't sit in a chair for a long time. I can already feel my legs. Um, you know, reacting, they just, they will start to burn and swell up and the fluid 
just starts fill, filling up in my lower legs and I don't I don't want to go back to that life I had surgery four ver, four rounds of surgery to remove the lipedema and I have two more to go so one of the wor very worst things I can do is just to sit down for a long time so um, I just thought I'd kill two birds with one stone. I, I'm trying not to say things like that, say, use sayings like that. Um, thought I would just, you know, double dip. Let's just say it that way. Double dip on my chair sitting time and visit with everybody and just do this live and drink coffee. Mm. Okay. So let's do this. Here we go. Um, there we go. Let's switch them. Oh, that looks really dark, and you all would not believe the amount of light I have on this desk right now. I like to use Vanna's choice for a lot of things. It's like you're really, um, oh, okay. Well, Jackie, I'll have to fix that later. Um, I think it's, uh, it's restream. So I'll have to go back and fix that later. It just, it does the last title from the time before. So I'll just, uh, hi, Aaron. I'll just, I'll scam some of her followers <laughs> for now, and then I'll go back and change that later. Okay, well, let me come in a little bit closer. Thanks for letting me know. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't um, wouldn't ever do it. I thought I would try out some of these bamboo hooks that I bought at the Lion Brand Outlet um, the last time I was there. I don't normally use an inline hook and um, I just wasn't really fond of Lion Brand's um, plastic hooks. So I, I never really used them, but then I saw they had these bamboo hooks right by the register and they, and so I thought I would just try them. But let's get a star blanket started. Hi, hi, hi. I know who that is. It says Facebook user, but I know who it is. So I'm going to start with uh, let me get this in focus. Chain four. I don't usually use inline. And join with a slip stitch. And I'll just briefly give my little spiel about starting with um, magic ring here. I don't recommend doing that for blankets. I'm already splitting the yarn. I don't recommend doing it for blankets. I've seen too many pictures of people's blankets where it has come undone. But if you choose to do it in the middle of your blanket, that is your choice. That's not my choice. I'm, I'm not going to do that. This has a little bit more stability. And um, if you do a magic ring, we make sure you weave it, weave it, weave it, weave it a bunch because that can come undone. Okay, so now we chain three. That counts as a double crochet and then 13 into the ring. All three of the star blankets start this way. The star, the superstar, and the supernova all have the same starting eight rounds. Hey, Linda, Linda, Linda. Linda, did you get your package from Zazzle yet? You were, weren't you one of the, you were one of the challenge winners last time. The uh, boom blanket challenge. Am I right? I'm, I don't, I don't know if I'm remembering things correctly. I feel like I just sent you a package recently, Linda. Some, and patrons, um, Every, every month I pick a patron to receive a surprise in the mail. So that might have been you. I don't remember which one it was.
This hook is slowing me down because um, I'm not used to the inline, but maybe that's good. So people need to go slow. So we have the chain plus 13. I keep losing count. Total of 14, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 3 more. 12. 14. <laughs> 14. We're going to join to the top of the chain three, which is that one. Chain three and double crochet in the same stitch. And now on this round, you're going to, hi Carol, you love inline hooks. So funny. Um, and now you're going to make two double crochet in each stitch around. So you should have 28 double crochet at the end of this round. The bamboo is a little bit sticky. You know, I really like to go fast. So this would take me a little getting used to, to really start going fast. The Vanna's choice is a four weight, I believe. And I usually work it with a J, but for your star blankets, you're going to start with the recommended hook. And then as your work gets bigger, you probably will need to go up a half millimeter or even the full millimeter, even more. Um, the super star blanket we found you needed to really jump up on that blanket. The star and the supernova. I think I maybe only went up one hook size. I don't know when I get a little further along. I think I was working worsted weight with the K hook. Are you breathing when you crochet? Are you thinking so hard that you're holding your breath? Let's count them. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, ten, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight. So this is where people sometimes make mistakes and end up with extra stitches is at the join. If you make the mistake of thinking that's a stitch, that's a slip stitch. That's not a stitch. So I don't really like to count, but on some rows you have to count, and um, this is one of them. But when you when you do find yourself with the wrong stitch count, check at the join to make sure you didn't work that slip stitch right there as an as a stitch. That's what I see a lot of people doing, and they get so many rows on the star blanket, and then they go, oh, "Wait a minute, I have too many stitches here." Um, and just because of the way I wrote the pattern, I didn't use stitch counts because they're going to change on every row. And I'm trying to make it like easy for you to remember the pattern on the repeats. Okay, set up round three. Hi, Lisa. 
Are you still working at Michael's, girl? Chain three. Double crochet. Now, unless it tells you to work into the same stitch, you advance to the next stitch. You don't work in the same stitch. Chain three. Two double crochet. So it doesn't say two double crochet in the same stitch. It says two double crochet. So that means you work across the stitches. And then chain one. And then repeat two double crochet. Chain two. <laughs> of course my mug is huge. I'm from New York. <laughs> three. We have some huge Betty McNitt mugs on my Zazzle, in my Zazzle store if you want a huge mug with a six day kid blanket printed on it. This is where it gets boring doing tutorials by myself without any, you know, without anyone here on the live to talk to. It's after you explain it and then you go, you go all the way around and you just have to work what you just explained. Still working at Michael's. How's everything going there, girl? I bet you all are ramping up for seasonal already. I was in so much pain last year at this time. Oh my gosh. As soon as the word seasonal came out of somebody's mouth, I was like, I know I can't do it again. <laughs> I can't do another one. <laughs> I think I did three peak seasons at Michael's. I was just in too much pain. I couldn't go up and down that ladder. You wish you had Michaels and Hobby Lobby in the UK. So the, the big thing that we have here right now that came out, and I don't know if they are, um, if they're going to be right stocked regularly or if they're just like a one-time thing, is the, um, the Karen anniversary cakes. And I haven't picked any of them up. Do you have them at the store, Lisa? Do you have them here? Lisa was, was my coworker at Michael's, my local Michael's. Oh, the Christmas trees inside a trailer. I could barely even open that trailer. That's how weak I was. I'm not sure I'm that much stronger this year, but I know I'm in a lot less pain. So I'm glad about that. Aww. <laughs> Thank you for saying that. It's really sweet. So yeah, when I have to go into a tight stitch like that, I usually use this end of the hook like that to kind of get into it. But with an inline, this is really pointy. I don't have to do that. <laughs> Uh-oh, I got a little snag on the wood. That's not good. If you like inline hooks, these hooks are okay. So the, um, all three of the star blankets start with the same eight rows. And the supernova and the star blanket are the same for even a few repeats. So this is the start for any of the three star blankets. And then you can count, you should have seven, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
pulls, um, I think it says that too, and if I don't know, it doesn't. But this is going to, this is going to be the points of the star blanket. Set up round four. Slip stitch into the next double crochet and chain three space. A slip stitch, not single. I just did a single crochet. Slip stitch. That just gets you over into this space. Chain three. And that counts as one double crochet. And now we're going to start making the three, three, three points into each of these spaces. So three double crochet. Chain three. Three double crochet. I'm going to pick the work up that goes out of focus a little bit. Okay, that's a little bit better. Okay. And then these chain one spaces are going to be the valley. So the star blanket's a little different from the regular six day kid blanket. The six day kid blanket has the two. Um, DC3 together that form the valley. The way the star blanket works is we have one um, DC3 together in the first row of the valley and then on the next row we'll have two that are straddling it. So it's a little different. It's a lot different. Um, but yet the same. So we're going to make a DC3 together here in this space and that's going to be our first valley. And then we just do that around three, three, three in the big space and DC three together in the small space. So I'll just, I was going to say I'll pick up the tempo a little bit, but I really can't with this inline hook. So I guess this will be a good tutorial for people that need to follow along because I feel like I'm going super slow. <laughs> and, and even like when I try to go slow, people tell me to slow down. Hmm, I smell somebody outside my window is smoking a cigarette, and even though I haven't smoked in many years, it still smells good to me sometimes. Anybody else think that? Any former smokers here still love the smell of smoke? It has um, started to, just yesterday, the temperature dropped here in New York. And it's definitely feeling like time to start making those hats and scarves. Aw. Erin, you are the queen of the supernovas. Makes you feel sick. Yeah, I'm not, um, I don't think about smoking anymore. I mean, it's when, you know, when you smoke all the time and, and you think you can never quit. And then when you first try to quit and it's like all you think about, 
and it, it's really difficult to quit and I don't think about it anymore except every once in a while I smell it and I'm like mm, that smells good I remember that <laughs> So I see I'm already starting to curl on this row. So I, I'm going to bump up on the next round. And it's okay to switch on the next round. You don't have to rip this out. That's, you know, yarn and crochet is pretty forgiving. You know, if this was like, like that, then I would say rip it back. But this is just a tiny bit of curl. And I could still make it lie flat if I wanted to. So I could maybe even do one more round and then go up. But it just has to do with the geometry of working around and around and around and around um, a circle. And you just have to have enough yardage going around for it to lay flat. Hey, Barb Hamlin. I'm just doing a star blanket tutorial because people ask for them a lot. And um, I never really did one. People won't like that I'm talking, but I can already feel my legs. I just can't sit in. I'm going to have to get a different type of chair, I think. I need the kind that you, like, half kneel on. And then I don't know how long I'm going to be able to kneel on that. My knees don't hurt like they used to before surgery. Like It really hit me yesterday how much, how much maintenance... And how diligent I'll have to be with my with me maintaining with my condition because um, I was I was in this chair yesterday just for a little bit too long and I had to I had to pump my legs twice yesterday and I had to wrap my legs at night too but, um, I my post-surgery wraps out and I wrapped my one my right leg for whatever reason is worse than the left one and I almost felt like it was starting to form a cuff again I got really scared so I can't mess around I have to take care of my legs I've invested way too much and so many people have helped me all my patrons and um, lots of people have donated to my fundraiser and that makes me feel really accountable to keep taking you know, the best possible care of myself. I'm, hi, Cindy Smith, I'm doing a star blanket. I'm just doing a tutorial for it because a lot of people ask for it. I never really did one. Um, I'm okay now. Carol says she's she hasn't made a star blanket yet. She made a few of the straight ones. I'm busy making mask adapters for the doctor's surgery, hospitals, and nursing homes. Yeah. Hi, Lena. She's working on her star blanket right now. Yeah, I'm, I'm, Carol, I'm doing so much better now. I'm, I'm just, really, I'm just taking care of myself. Um, learning more and more how important it is. All right. Let's move on to round five. And this is a little bit weird, but we want to work out of this space right here. So we're just going to make a slip stitch into that space. And it's a little bit funky, 
And this is the only time you have to do this on this blanket. Um, and then you chain two. And we're chaining two, and that's the beginning of your DC three together. But we had to start it with a chain. So we had to chain up. Okay? So that chain two is like the first half double crochet of the DC three together. All right? And now this is a very important part of this. This is where you're going to join on the next round. So we're going to mark that at the end of the round, rather. You want to join in the top of the DC3 together. I think that's right. And now we're going to 333 three, three in the top of the, yeah, that's right, in the top of the mountain. I'll take you to row eight because that's how all three of the star blankets start. They all start with the same first eight rows. So you can even start one and then decide once you get to row eight, do I want to just keep going with the star? Let me stop talking. Okay, see that DC three together? Now we're gonna put one on each side for this round. You don't even have to decide which star blanket you're doing until you finish row eight. And if you're using cake yarn, I recommend that you control the colors for these first eight rounds because if you have a mid-row color change in the in the center, it really stands out. And I'm not one to cut cakes, you know. I'm you all know I'm the biggest lazy ass there is, and I'm not one to cut cakes. But for your center of your star, it does look better if you. Um, if you just make sure that the color changes at the end of the row. After that, you can just let it flow and it'll, it'll be fine. And people have different levels of tolerance for mid-row color changes. And at the end of the day, you have to be happy with what you're making. You have to enjoy looking at it in your hands. For a long time. Oh, I forgot to go up. I forgot to change my hook. And so if you don't like mid-row color changes, then cut your cakes. It's okay. Don't listen to anyone that says, why would you get cakes and then not and then you know cut them up? That defeats the purpose. I don't agree with that. If you want to control your cake, your colors, control your colors. If you don't mind, then don't. Blankets look beautiful either way. The thing about the six day kid blanket is, is be, that the, the mid row color changes are not as they don't really stand out as much and they don't appear in regular intervals because you have different types of rows you have double crochet you have what we call the granny rows with the clusters and then you have single crochet rows so that breaks up the yardage you know because these long um color change yarns they change colors at sort of kind of specific you know, intervals and the different stitches of the pattern kind of break up that yardage. And, and then if you mix different color, different color cakes and like alternate rows with them, it hides them even better. But if you don't like them, don't, don't do them. You don't have to just because somebody said, I think there's way too much in 
the crochet, knitting, um, you know, craft of there's a right way and a wrong way and you're doing it the right way and I'm doing it the wrong way or and there's, you know, like we beat ourselves up and then we beat each other up sometimes, you know, and I don't really think any of that is helpful. Oh, the ombre. Yeah, the ombre yarns is, um, thank you, Facebook user. <laughs> I'm so glad that you find it useful to try and help you guys get your star blankets going. And I know it's confusing too, because then you get to that point on, and it's going to be this next row after this, that you don't have enough and you want to know how many you should have in your, how many stitches you should have in the row. And the thing is, it's just, it's just not helpful to know that if you don't know how you got wrong in the first place. So that's why I don't give the stitch counts also because I'm lazy and I don't like to count. I, when I'm crocheting, I want to watch my show. So I don't want to be sitting there counting to 36, you know, um, obviously on our chains it's at, at sometimes we have to count, but I don't, I, I, and this is just my, the way that I think I like to read my work. And let, uh, you know, read the work and let the work tell me what comes next. I feel like that's easier than memorizing counts or counting. And, you know, that way I can engage with the people around me, too. Because you don't want to be at home crocheting in a bubble and no one can talk to you. And, you know, you're just on your own because you have to count. But we've all done that thing, right? When you're counting and somebody starts talking to you and you're like, 15, 16, 17, 18. <laughs> all our family members, I think, know what that means, right? <laughs> I'm going real slow for you guys. Oops. If y'all see me start this next row with this same hook, stop me because I have to go up a size. That's a very good idea. You guys are too funny. <laughs> Hi, I'm making, um, I'm starting this six day star blanket, superstar blanket or supernova blanket. They all start with the same eight rows and there's some little tricky spots and, you know, people like to have videos to work along with. I never really, I did tutorials on lives like this, but I never really did like a good tutorial that people can follow along and and really explain the pattern. I think I did it, but it was hard to see because it was it was in an interview style and it was just like in the center screen. And one thing I did notice filming, um, trying to film tutorials for this once upon a time, um, was that 
the, the, the project grew pretty quickly and it was hard to get it all in the shot. Um, so yeah, I did, um, I did film some, but then what I've learned is that it kind of helps to release the pattern and put it out there and then see what questions people have so that I can make sure I address the problem spots in the video. The video is going to be out there forever. Yeah, it almost like you it, it almost a pattern is almost incomplete without a video tutorial at, in this day and age. And that's what happened with the 60 kid blanket. It went viral and I wasn't really even paying attention. Um, somebody posted a photo and it went viral and she tagged me and I was bombarded with emails from people asking, where's the video tutorial for this? And I was like, I don't know. I, 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 should I make that? And my kids were like, um, hello, YouTube. Like you actually make money doing that. And I was like, I didn't even know. I didn't even know people made money on YouTube. Okay, here we are at this very critical juncture. I am so glad that we marked this. That's where we're gonna slip stitch. Okay, so not into one of these chains down here. And then you're gonna find this is even more important. On this round, yeah, visual people need a need, you know, need a little more, you need a different kind of instruction. Patterns are, if you're a visual learner, all those words and numbers and symbols are very difficult to understand. Um, okay, so we're going to slip stitch here. Now, this is the problem spot that gets people, people, where people go wrong. Okay. So you, you, I st made a slip stitch into the correct place at the top of my DC3 together. And now I'm going to chain one. And now I'm going to single crochet into that same space. Okay. So this is my slip stitch. This is my chain. This is my single crochet. The single crochet is the one that you're going to join to at the beginning of the round. Okay, this one. Not this and not this, but this. So as soon as you make that single crochet, you mark this. And so the mistake that happens is people come around to the beginning here and then they, they slip stitch into one of these and they create additional stitches. Thank you for reminding me to change my hook. <laughs> I have a, this came with three. So I have a K right here. I'm going to switch to. I'm a show me person. Yeah, and a lot of us don't have, you know, someone there to show us, sit next to us and show us anymore. Okay, so can you use a colored marker? You know, I was thinking that. Because there's no contrast there. Okay. That's the, that is the slip stitch. That's the chain. That's the single crochet. So you want to make sure that you join when you come back around into the sink, the top of the single crochet. All right. So let me just whip out these single crochets. And now here's why I don't want to count because I can just say, I'm going to single crochet in every stitch and I'm going to put three double crochet in each of these points. And then why would I want to count? At this point, this is like the easiest row. This is where you can watch your show or talk to your kids or, you know, whatever. 
you don't have to think. You can think about other things. You don't have to be sitting there going one, two, three, four, five. I don't know. It's just me. Okay. So the pattern says to single crochet in each. I'll just I'll just single crochet in each stitch and show you what that would look like. Single crocheting in each stitch. Three stitches in each chain three space. Three single crochet. Yeah, thanks for asking me to do that, Barb. Appreciate it. Okay, so now I'm here at the valley again. Here's another way to do this rather than crocheting into these three stitches is you can crochet into the space, work a single crochet into the space. And it just gives it a little bit more definition. The pattern doesn't say this to do it that way, but that is, you know, a different way that you could do it. Don't get messed up though and mess up your stitch counts because then you're going to you're going to go there next. So if it's your first one and you're a relative beginner, just Follow the, the, the directions as written and don't go off label for this one yet until you're feeling really confident and, and you see like, oh, there's those three spaces. I can just work into the spaces if I want to. So I'll work into the stitches again so you can see what that looks like. One, two, three. And then three in the points. It's your blanket's fine if you don't do it. You don't have to do it. I just I didn't put it in the pattern because I think it's confusing for new people. And it's one of those things an experienced crocheter can, you know, they can kind of figure that out for themselves. So I don't put a lot of things like that in the pattern. I try and keep it really simple so that new people aren't like confused. What did I say? Yeah, I'm going into the spaces this time. I don't remember if I said yeah. So I'm doing it both ways so you can choose. But if you're if your single crochet, if your stitch counts end up off, then that would be something to check. But usually the counts are off, the single crochet counts are off because of the join, the way that um, the join is handled. I just kind of do this way just automatically now. I've started doing it on the um, regular six day kit blankets too. I'm going to need to go up again for this one. This hook is not big enough. Okay. This is my last stitch of the row right here. That is my last DC3 together is that stitch right there. 
and I'm not going to work this. This is my slip stitch and I'm not going to join here. That's my chain one. I'm going to join here to the top of the single crochet and join with a slip stitch. Okay, let's admire that. Lay your work down and admire it often. Okay, so you'll, you'll see this when people ask questions about, you know, when they start going up to the next row and they're trying to do a certain number of double crochet and they have too many stitches here. And then you'll see that this is not, this valley is, was not formed properly if too many stitches were made. So look down at your work, and if this is flat like this, and there's no valley here, and there's like all this extra stuff right in here, you have made that join mistake on row. What row is that? Row six. Row six is the problem row, okay? So if you start, if you go on, to, and, and row five too, if you've joined this incorrectly, the problem may have started all the way back down here. So that's why knowing your stitch count here doesn't really help you if you've done something wrong all the way back to here. All right, my dear. Have a good rest of your day. You're very welcome. So it should all your, you know, all your valleys should pretty much look the same going around. This should be pretty uniform. So check them all. If they kind of look the same. When you get back when you get back around to your join if this looks different and something went wrong okay I really hope that helps that is the problem area for this getting this blanket started where a lot of people get hung up and come asking for help and don't know what they did wrong okay let's see so we are on round seven now so we're going to slip stitch into the next stitch. Aw. Carol, I can't wait to see what you make. You always do such beautiful work. Chain three counts as the um, first double crochet. And then, let me see. It says four double crochet. See, I don't even, I don't even count them. But I did give you numbers so you would know. Here it's chain three, three double crochet, five double crochet in center. This okay, I knew that. So even though one, two, three, it says center, the center is a little bit off, skewed off to the right on this blanket because you're working in the round. I yeah, I was looking at I was looking at the next row down. It's chain 3, 3 double crochet, 5 double crochet in the top. And it won't feel like the center, it will feel like right of center and then 4. Woo, man. I'm like here with super egg on my face. <laughs> I was reading the next line of the pattern. So this is four. Okay. Now I know I'm right. And now I know it's right. And I'll explain why. With every six day kid blanket, you will never have to count your double crochets again. With every six day kid blanket, the last double crochet coming down the mountain lands right here in between these the last two stitches of this cluster here. 
So that's just another way that you can read your work. And you saw what I did. When I got to that point, I was like, wait a minute, I'm too far. Because I know that this is always the stopping point right here. And this is not just for the star blankets. It's also for the regular six day kid blanket. Your last, you won't have to count to seven doing a six, doing a six day anymore. You just stop. You, you know, you can stop when you get here and then skip to, and it feels a little off center, right? Because I stopped over here on the last one and now I'm over here, but it works out and it's because we're not going back and forth that this it keeps kind of switching like bumping over to the right a little bit and it's because of the way the stitches land because we're not working back and forth we're working in the round so there you go you are always gonna stop there skip two and then start your next um, double crochet and so we know that this round we do four double crochet and then five in the point and see how it's it's not really the center it's a little right of center and it's just where the top of the stitch lands if we were working back and forth, the top of the stitch would be on the other side. So that's why it maybe doesn't really feel or look like the center, but it's fine. If it if we did it the other way, your blanket, sometimes you see people, their, their blankets are like twisting or curving a little bit. Okay, and then I don't have to count to go down because I know or if you do, it can just be a way to check yourself. Count one, two, three, four. And then there's there's my last stitch right there at that cluster. And then I skip two. And then going up the mountain with four. One, two, three. Four. Okay, and then five in that top. I'm just checking to see what other hooks I have sitting nearby. And then four to go down. Now I know how my followers feel when they get to the top of it. They get to that point and they're like, it doesn't work, but it does work. Oh, thank you. Yes, it's the um, Lion Brand Bamboo Hooks. I had this set and I don't remember what I paid for them at the outlet. I'm sorry. I... I love my furls, Odyssey, that's my favorite hook. And I can tell you I was the last person in the world that I would think would ever spend money on hooks like that because I dropped them constantly. But um, I really love my furls, Odyssey. I'm rather obsessed with them. Um, but I do like to, when I go yarn shopping or to yarn stores and I, I kind of gravitate to things that I have never seen before, things that are new. So even though I know I don't really use this kind of hook normally, I just, I wanted to try them because I saw they had a different style of hook and I didn't really like their old style. So I just wanted to see what they were like. And I think they're very nice. I don't usually use an inline. Well, Carol, I can say that they are expensive. 
but crochet is something that I do every day. So for me, I feel like it's worth the investment, especially since I crochet so much and I do feel like I don't have as much hand or shoulder pain. I get shoulder pain when I knit or crochet too much and I just don't get as much as, as of that as I did before my um, my hand does what they what the Odyssey hook allows my hand to do is relax more. I don't have to grip it and I can just relax more. So it allows me to go faster and it you know keeps my hands from holding too much tension. I know people um Oh, you wish the Susan Bates inline hooks had handles like the clover. I think it depends too on how you hold your hook. I wonder, do you hold your hook like I do? Or do you hold it like this? I wish I held my hook like this. I just think it's so pretty when I see <laughs> people holding their hook like that. It's like, it's. I was going to try and drink my coffee with my pinky up, but no way with this mug. It's so heavy. But yeah, when I see people holding their holding their hook like that, and oh, it just seems so dainty. I feel like a I feel like a like a tomboy or something holding my hook overhand. <laughs> I don't know why. You get cramps in your hands. Yeah, you use the pencil grip. That might be why. I prefer a really different style of hook. Star Blanket grows so fast. Your elbows get involved. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh my gosh. Picking up the tempo a little bit. Okay, we're almost at the end. So here we go. Same thing. We're going to work down to that last cluster. Line it up. Oh, wow. So this is as you're getting to join this should this should be indented and if it's flat you probably made too many stitches here okay and then slip stitch here and let's just admire it there have been some really beautiful star blankets made um with uh people using cake yarns and the, um, the ombres and um, the um, like the shapias, um what do they call that the color graduated color change I forget what they call it um, somebody somebody made a star blanket recently where they held two strands together. Hang on, I'm getting a message. OK, 
Okay, I have to finish this up because I'm being called away. Okay, they are on row eight. This is row eight. Slip one, chain three. And this is the this is the last round or all three star blankets are the same. So the first eight rows, you can get this far and then decide, do I want a superstar? If you want a superstar, the next row, round nine, set up round nine is going to be different, I think. And if you want a supernova, you don't even have to decide that until later. Uh oh, I only did three. So I'm talking and I'm going into automatic mode. I probably should bump up another hook size too. Uh, I'm gonna keep going one more. The the um the granny rows are the rows that pull in the work and the double crochet rows are the rows that kind of um, increase. This is where the increase is. And the decrease is here. So this these rows end up tighter than these rows, just like the regular six day kid blanket. Like when you see somebody's swatch and they finished with the double crochet rows and then the swatch looks kind of splayed then it's the next rows, the granny rows, that'll bring it back in. So same with this. So this row, this is the row with the, it starts with four double crochet, going up and then five, and then each time you go around the blanket, that's gonna increase. And put five double crochet into the center. Do you see how that is the center double crochet right there? And um, do you see how the top of the stitch falls a little bit to the right of the stitch? That's why it doesn't really feel like the center, but trust me, it is. Five. Whirls, thank you. The Shepius whirls. They're so beautiful. I'm working on a pattern specifically for that yarn or a, a, a scarf slash shawl. It's not 60 kid blanket. Okay, I don't count this either. I just work until the second to the last double crochet and then I skip the center too. And that's one way that I'm, you know, people say, oh, you go so fast. That's one way I'm able to do it because I, um, I don't count. I read the work and you do have to set it up, um, you know, properly for it to all work out. But if you're reading your work, then you have a, you know, you can still count, but you have a, you have a checkpoint, you know, you have checkpoints. And just like what happened to me before, I got, I, I did, I counted, and I knew I was not landing in the right spot. So, you know, that averted disaster and a whole lot of ripping later on and a whole crooked star blanket. And it's hard for us to, when something doesn't work like that, it's hard for, like, I didn't even want to admit right then that I had made a mistake, you know, on my own pattern. So it's, 
I don't know. I feel like crochet is a metaphor for life. You know, it's easier sometimes to say, oh, this pattern is wrong or, you know, something else is wrong rather than to be like, uh-oh, I made a mistake. Let me go back and correct that. We all make mistakes. Mistakes are how you learn. I am splitting a little bit with this hook. I think it's just because it's just not my preferred hook. I'm speeding up now too because I just got a message I had to get going. Of all the star blankets, I think just the basic star is the easiest. The superstar would be next. And the supernova is the most complicated. And it's not really difficult. It just has, um, it has some extra rows in it. So you do have to once you get past the setup rows for the star and the superstar, you can just go and it's mindless. Especially if you've taught yourself to read the work and not have to count every row, it's totally mindless. But the supernova, it has spurts of mindlessness and then parts where you have to think. I know I bought some of the whirls last year and I was just like, what do I do with this? And then I started to get ideas. If you, if you like hearing about what's coming up and even influencing how the patterns turn out, like the, uh, join my Patreon and $5 and up level um, we have weekly, we have monthly lives for $5 and up, but those, all the patrons see like what's coming up and what's going on behind the scenes. See you later, Aaron. Have a good day. Um, but yeah, if you like bouncing around ideas with me, um, join Patreon and the patrons right now are helping to shape the, um, the pocket shawl that's coming out soon. The pocket shawl pattern. Okay, that is round eight of the star blanket getting it started. And I hope that um, I hope that you all find that useful. Hope that helps somebody. I think that, um, that those problem rows that um, you know that's where most of the problems are down down in here. Once you get past that, you're good. And I hope you all had found some useful tips there. Um, Sophie says she had a 20% off coupon. Pearls has sales. So thank you all for hanging out with me today. I have to get going. Um, and um, before I sign off, I'm going to go over to Restream and try and correct that title before I... Um, post this so you might see me fiddling around a little bit 
here, but um, I'll just play my music and I'll say goodbye. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you.